Have you ever found yourself deep in socket programming only to hit a wall with typecasting? It can be really confusing, right? If you're grappling with safe reinterpret cast usage with sock adder, you're in the right place. Today, we're going to clarify this tricky topic. I totally get it. The world of socket programming can feel overwhelming, especially when it comes to typecasting. You're not alone in wondering if reinterpret cast is safe in this context. Many developers have faced this dilemma. Let's dive into the specific question at hand. One user asked, is it safe to use reinterpret cast between different types when working with sock adder? They pointed out that while tutorials often show this casting, the standard doesn't guarantee it will work. Sound familiar? Let's explore this together. So what's the deal with reinterpret cast and sock adder? The concern arises because reinterpret cast can lead to undefined behavior if the types are not compatible. However, in the case of sock adder and sock adder in, there are nuances that we need to consider. And stick around. At the end of this video, I'll share a crucial tip that can help you avoid pitfalls in socket programming. To address the user's question about using reinterpret cast with sock adder, it's important to understand the underlying types involved. The user is correct that reinterpret cast does not guarantee safety across different types, but in this specific case, it can be safe due to the way sock adder and sock adder in are structured. The sock adder structure is a generic structure used for various address families, while sock adder in is specifically designed for IPv4 addresses. When the user binds a socket, the bind function expects a pointer to sock adder, which is why reinterpret cast is used here. Next, the user should ensure that the memory layout of sock adder in matches that of sock adder. In practice, this is usually the case because sock adder in is designed to be compatible with sock adder. However, the user should always be cautious and check the documentation for their specific platform. Finally, while reinterpret cast can work in this scenario, the user should consider using a safer alternative, such as using a pointer to sock adder and casting it when necessary. This approach can help avoid potential pitfalls in more complex scenarios. Fun fact, the original BSD Sockets API was developed in the late 1980s. It's amazing how far we've come, yet some of these fundamental issues still puzzle developers today. Now let's look at the answers provided by other users. This user explains that the standard allows for different implementations when it comes to pointer manipulation. While not all implementations are required to support low-level programming, a quality implementation, especially on Unix systems, should handle type agnostic structure access. If an implementation struggles with this, it may not be suitable for low-level programming, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's a defect. That's all for that response. Let's see what someone else... This user clarifies that using reinterpret cast between sock adder and sock adder in is not safe. They explain that these types are unrelated, which can lead to incorrect assumptions about memory allocation. Instead, they recommend allocating memory for both types and using stidmem cpy to safely copy the data. They emphasize the importance of ensuring both objects are the same size, suggesting a static assert to verify this. While stepmem cpy may not always be free, it is often efficient. Now, let's shift our focus to a different response. An alternative approach suggests that using reinterpret cast with sock adder is safe in the context of the bind function. The user explains that bind can be implemented to check the address family before accessing the data, ensuring safety. The user emphasizes that the reinterpret cast itself is not an undefined behavior as long as the data is accessed correctly. They note that the implementation must handle cases where sock adder in six is used as its size is larger than sock adder. That's all for that response. Let's see what someone else had to say. This user suggests that casting to struct sock adder pointer is common in example code and is generally safe when using a well-documented API. The key point is that it's only unsafe if you violate the function's preconditions. 
They also explain that different types of sock adder exist, like sock adder in and sock adder un, but there's only one bind function. Therefore, casting is necessary. Finally, the user notes that while reinterpret cast is similar to a C style cast, being explicit with reinterpret cast improves code readability. Let's take a look at an answer from another user. This user confirms that using reinterpret cast with sock adder is safe and correct. They explain that WinSock functions interpret sock adder pointers differently based on the address family. The key requirement is that the pointer must start with the U short sin family. They emphasize that reinterpret cast does not change the pointer itself, making it valid to use in the bind function. Additionally, the user presents an alternative approach using a union. This method allows for defining both sock adder and socket in, ensuring compatibility when binding. They suggest that the bind function first checks the A family before casting to the specific structure. Here's the tip I promised. Always ensure that the types you are casting between are compatible. When in doubt, refer to the documentation or community best practices to avoid unexpected behavior. And there you have it. You should now feel more confident about using reinterpret cast with socket. Remember, understanding the underlying structures is key to safe programming. If you found this video helpful, please subscribe for more insights and tips.